Hello and welcome to the 20, episode 21, the 22nd episode of the Aquarius. I even wrote it down this time. That's why uh, I never do that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's every time it's hard. Yeah. Uh, this episode of Yay Query is brought to you by Tiny CDN, of course, and Wotato, the greatest social networking mashup since real life. Um, we're gonna jump right into things, and uh, I jump think you in. may have heard. I think you may have heard of uh, a library called jQuery. Mm. It's a uh, it's a small uh, JavaScript, I think, library. And we got a new about, version coming out. Is yeah, that yeah, what I heard? Yeah, I think I think one five is in RC as we record this, or yeah, RC one as we record this. And yes. I bet if my if my sources are correct, that we might have a uh, a release sometime pretty soon so um maybe even between the editing of this episode and real life so what are the um adam do you want to kick us off with one of the what we're going to be seeing inside jquery 1.5 and what people are can expect to get now do i Mm. yes do you so (laughs) we the one of the biggest features that's landing in jquery 1.5 is a rewrite of the ajax module uh by julian oborg primarily but everyone helped on it as well julian oborg um uh so the the big impact of this now is that ajax has a there's a completely different way of assigning callbacks uh to ajax which is that you can now chain or reference your AJAX call and then attach a success handler or a, um, a fail or whatever it was that you want to attach. You can attach that in the body of the other code. There's no more. You don't necessarily have to pass a callback directly to AJAX. It, rel- it allows you to um, really hook different dependent behaviors at different times and it allows for a, a much less mind-numbing way, I think, <laughs> of dealing with this challenging thing that people encounter, which is like passing callbacks and dealing with when Ajax things finish and then returning back to your normal execution flow. Yeah, so the big difference here is that the Ajax function, so jQuery.ajax, but also the convenience methods, now return an actually useful object. They used to just basically return sort of the, the, the XHR itself, XHR, the native, like, right. nasty XHR itself, which was fine if you wanted to muck with it, but this is really, this gets really exciting because, sure, you can still pass success and error properties when you're setting up your Ajax, and you can still use everything just the way that you've been using it all along. But in addition, when you call jQuery.ajax, you get a return value that you can attach more stuff to. And it's crazy so, because now you can pass that around and have all sorts of fun. I, I have a question. Question. Okay, I remember before when um, that, so Ajax did return the XHR object, and in the, the one time that, that was actually useful to know um, was that you wanted to kill the XHR, and you wanted to call the abort method on the XHR. Uh, does anyone know how we do that now since we don't actually get the XHR back? I, if I recall correctly, and I think we might have a special guest later who can sure. tell me if I'm right, um, but if I recall correctly, we can still do that, yes. So so what we get back from Ajax is like an XHR on steroids with all sorts of mm. fantasticness to it. Like but, calls it the J- for the record, I'm against steroids. Uh, <laughs> steroid use in general. On, it's on like it's eating lots of bananas. <laughs> and, I don't know. I, a steroids is the best I got. Yakeway does not officially advocate steroids. No. Steer too forward. We also, advocate any drug beer. use and performance enhancing materials are not encouraged by this podcast. Let's not get carried Except away. Except for JF Perf. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So yes. so we'll we'll talk to hey, somebody Rebecca, special. Yes. Rebecca, what? I I need you to stop. I think we should just call the source. Call him. Call, let's call the source. Uh, Julian. Call him. Julia. Al, Al- I don't know how to say anything in French. That's going to be our first question. How our do you French, say your name? <laughs> our French colleague, Julian Alborg, as we say in Texas, <laughs> uh, is on the line now, and we'd like to talk to him. So let's, let's wait for him to dial in. Oh. Hi. Julian? Julian! Julian! Welcome to Yay Query. Julian? 
Good, thanks. <laughs> our, our first question, we want to know how you say your name in proper French. In proper French, uh, it's Julien. Julien. Oh my god, Julien. so hot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we love it. <gasps> yeah, that's good. Well, I, I, could, uh, I could speak French with a more French accent. Ooh. <laughs> Perfect. 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 <laughs> All right, so we had one question off the bat, um, which is, um, I remember before the Ajax re rewrite, when Ajax returned the DXHR object, and we could just call the abort method on it, and that was basically the only way to kill um, an XHR that was going out as it was in progress. Uh, how do we do that nowadays? Uh, not sure I got the question right, but basically we have... Uh, uh, an object that is uh, some kind of emulation of a native uh, XHR, and it's returned its dead. Right. And so can we call abort, does that object have an abort method too? too? Yes, you have, uh, uh, you have the method to set headers, uh, retrieve headers once you have the response. You have uh, the abort method. Uh, you have uh, some fields too, like status, status text, uh, and response text, and uh, response XML if they are available on the native uh, etc. So, like uh, I said, steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Julian, uh, just a, another quick question. What time is it uh, where you are? <laughs> Let me check. It's uh, 3.45 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and, and quick question for Paul, what time is it where you are? It's 6.45 in the 6 evening. 6.45 p.m. All right. <laughs> just, uh, just gauging uh, dedication levels here. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, okay, I had another question, which is uh, with the Ajax rewrite, we have a lot more control and flexibility around the transport layer. And so I remember asking you uh, uh, a bit ago about this, but so basically like we can now you like leverage WebSockets, for instance, via the Ajax method. Is that right? Like how, how does that work? Uh, it's, uh, it's a bit more constrained than that. Uh, basically, when you want to create a new transport, you have to uh, create a, a factory function. Mm -hmm. It will return an object that provides a send and an abort method. Okay? Yep. So basically, you have to have some kind of uh, uh, sending, retrieving layer under, uh, under the transport. Yeah. For instance, and a script tag, an, a native etc., uh, a link tag for uh, CSS uh, loading, stuff like that. That sounds hot. I like it. And and what do you think? Like, um, uh, I mean, the this Ajax rewrite is, is probably one of the the biggest features of of 1.5. Um, what like what are end users, the the jQuery developers, going to? What's the biggest benefit that they get out of it? What like was difficult for them before, but now is really nice and easy. Uh, I think the the thing that most people will see right off the bat and use uh, is the the promise the behavior of the uh, the uh, new Ajax object that is returned in place of uh, the native XHR. Yeah, the promises are hot. Yeah, yeah because you that way you can bind uh, methods of callbacks uh, later on without having to provide them in the options. So I can see a pattern where people will uh, store the JXHR object and uh, just just call success error or complete call, uh, methods on them to register callbacks later. Yeah. Uh, I noticed you started off that, that sentence with right off the bat. Uh, don't you have, like, isn't your, uh, your personal brand something about, uh, like, a, some kind of bat? Uh, what is it? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't think it was an English expression. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just linking things together That's that like make no sense. like the bat from The Tick, is it? Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I must have read that someplace, some time. <laughs> it, it was not some English speaker who said, who said that. <laughs> well, if you check out Julian's website, um, uh, what, what's your website address? Is it just julianalborg.com? Uh, uh, net. Uh, Actually. Okay, just Shellborg. 
Oh, I've been saying I, I it can, wrong. I could totally say Gauberg. that correctly. Schauberg. Um, Schauberg. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, look in our show links, and you can look at his website, and you can see his bat logo. Yeah. He has one of the most clever email addresses of all time, next to this one that I heard on Twitter, yeah, of Emilio Address <laughs> That's good. <laughs> wow. But J- Julian has uh, J at... Al- uborg.com, right? Like, yeah. So it's just Xiaoborg. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's, that's hot. hot. We'll, we'll post yeah, that in our link. That way you get a lot of spam. I, I was happy with the, with the domain, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, work. thank you, Julian, for joining us. This has Jul- been great. Julian. Uh, thank Jul- you. I'm a big fan. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. Take care. Likewise. Wow. Well, that was awesome and surprising and fun. Right. So, uh, but it reminds me of a night. Um, uh oh. Oh no. They ended the real call. FYI, what's happened now is that Paul hung up on everyone. I'm expecting him to call me back pretty shortly. Um, I'm hoping. Oh no! It appears that he's crashed. So I'm gonna give you guys the live IRC feed of what's going on. Right now, I'm explaining to everyone that I'm narrating what's happening during the outage that is now occurring. No communication is happening, but some part of Paul's computer has crashed. Um, it's right now. Alex is misspelling Paul's name um, and uh, yelling loudly on IRC chat. So, now that we have a couple seconds here, I think it's a great time to tell you that the jQuery UI tooltip is currently in the, has been merged to the master branch of jQuery UI, which means that you can expect to have the tooltip in 1.9. And what's really cool about the tooltip that I myself found out earlier this week, that Paul Irish is calling back. So more on that later. Hey Adam. Um, yeah. Hey guys, guess what? You weren't talking literally... about us just now, were you? No, no. I, well, I talked about you guys, and then I went into a segment on the jQuery UI tooltip, so we can pick <laughs> that up later. Um, oh, awesome. Well, we'll cross that off the list and assume you did a great job. It's not done yet. I only teased it. So well, I think t- we landed on our feet. Um, so I was just going to tell a story, you guys, about a night much like this one in the jQuery uh, on IRC, in the jQuery dev channel. Yep. Um, where we, Rebecca was talking to Julian about this, uh, the late binding stuff, and noticed that it sort of seemed like something that could be made more generic. Um, and that conversation grew and grew, and more people got involved, and lo and behold, there is now this thing in jQuery called a deferred, um, which is this awesome mechanism for uniformly assigning callbacks for asynchronous or synchronous behavior um, that can be used in all sorts of different applications. I think Rebecca probably can share a couple uh, I'm gonna, now, and I have some. I'm going to try. It's, um, I, I have a blog post up that sort of explains this, but the, the API in the blog post is all out of date now. Anyway, deferreds and more specifically promises, which Julien, Julien, I, I just want to say that over and over again, uh, which he talked about uh, when we were just talking with him, is kind of the underpinning of this functionality that allows AJAX to have, to, that allows you to bind callbacks later to AJAX. Um, so what deferreds and promises do is they sort of extend that idea of being able to register your interest in the eventual outcome of something. Um, they, they let you say, I want to know when this is done how it how it ended. So with an AJAX request, we say, I want to know when this request succeeds. What, how did it succeed? What was the value that was returned by it? So without getting into it too much, what, what deferreds and promises let you do is, is do that beyond just AJAX. So you can say that when my timeout gets done running, I want to know how it ended up how, how it ended up resolving itself. Um, when some sort of asynchronous behavior like talking to a SQLite database finishes, I want to know how that 
ended up? Did it end up successfully? Did it end up failing, etc.? Um, so anyway, it's it's um, it's a neat thing. It's kind of hard to explain. It's best explained by examples, um, but I'm pretty excited about it. It's something that I discovered when I started working with Dojo, and it became just invaluable to me in the Dojo work I was doing. And I'm really, 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 really excited to see promises coming to yeah. jQuery. As soon as they landed, I had sort of had some problems that I kind of instantly thought, I think that deferreds can kind of solve this. Um, and one thing I think actually, Eric Hines wrote a blog post. Uh, I don't know if he's actually even published it yet. But in it, uh, I have an example that uh, where what I did was I wrapped a jQuery uh, di UI dialog in a deferred. And then I resolved the deferred with whatever button was called. So it really makes for leveraging um, certain things where you're waiting for a user interaction. Uh, it kind of lets you obscure around the fact that you're waiting. And a lot of times in JavaScript, you need uh, in modern web apps, you need to try and work around the fact that something is waiting for something. And this is awesome for working around that. All right. Um. Uh, just just very briefly, I I noticed that we've been kind of using promises and deferreds interchangeably. Kind of. Yes. Uh, please and, address that. And and I would love to address that, except for that I don't believe that I'm as smart as uh, the guy who edits our podcast, who also happens to be a core jQuery committer, <laughs> uh, Colin Snover, who is more or less a genius. Uh, who we should definitely have on the podcast soon. Um, I think he's sick but, right now. Uh, yeah, he, he's a little sick, um, but um, but it needs to happen because uh, because he he very much is a driving force and getting stuff done in jQuery. So I would like right now, right after I finish this sentence, for him to pause. This is a run-on sentence. For him to pause jQuery and and insert the text or audio or I don't care how he does it of the difference between a deferred and a promise and why they're different and, and, or, or whatever he cares about because we always get it wrong. Here is how those two things are different right here. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> And we're back from that. We appreciate that, Snover. And, uh, Thank you, Snover. Uh, Col Colin Snover is his full name. Snover is his uh, IRC handle and, and other stuff. He's at Zetafleet.com and owns Wotato, a sponsor of, J of jQuery. Um, uh, in other words, he's a badass. And thank you for that awesome explanation. Thank you. Uh, but we'll move on. <clears throat> um, one thing that we just want to clear up uh, real briefly is that... Um, uh, there had been announcements earlier around uh, the inclusion of jQuery.temple or TMPL, the templating, uh, the official templating plugin, uh, going basically very merged into jQuery core. Um, that's not happening in 1.5, and I don't think it's going to happen in 1.6. Or uh, ever. But it's definitely a maintained uh, core plugin, uh, so you can rely that on that. Is, that is still in beta. Theoretically, it's still in beta. Go beta. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Can I, say theory, I didn't mean to say theoretically. I, that leaked out. I apologize to everyone who might be affected by that. Um, also, uh, also what, Paul? Let's talk about recently renamed functions. Uh, <laughs> that are gonna be I got one. Okay. Hey, hey guys, yeah. I have one. What is that? Oh, yeah? uh, so in the <clears throat> RC that still exists today. Currently, there's a new function that's kind of uh, a little bit cool it's called cool. Uh, $.subclass or jQuery.subclass, right? Yep. Uh, so we, we had a pretty lengthy, heated discussion, as always, in, uh, in the jQuery dev channel. Um, and we've decided that it wasn't close enough to actual like class OOP type stuff. Right. It, was, it was more specific. Than that, it's um, sub jQuery. Call it subclass. Yeah, it's more right. of like a it's a sub jQuery. It's not really a subclass of jQuery because that implies some more things. Heritage. So yeah. we decided that it needed a new name. Um, and lazy us decided that we could just cut off class and sub, <laughs> which is shorter. Love it. And 
and more or less specific. So basically, the there there's what sub does is um <clears throat> okay I'm gonna do uh, var my query equals jQuery sub. Okay, and what Got that's it. gonna do is my query now is like this little it's like sandbox it's kind of like semi sandbox sort of thing. But the the the, the thing that happens is that it has the um. It, I can basically add plugins onto my query, but those plugins don't affect what's happening on the global pages jQuery. So it's kind of like my own little instance of jQuery that I can like toy with to a good degree, and um, it stays there and doesn't touch the top one. Right. Sort of. And 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 so there are limitations to this that I won't go into specifics about, or else these guys will kill me. But if you want. <laughs> If you want like the limitations of where it goes, you can talk to me in the jQuery channel because I really think that maybe this needs to move towards like a more full thing because like data is still shared, for instance. That's an important thing. Your data is still shared between your subclasses. And there's other places where uh, like closures affect things. Right. So, so be careful. Look into what you're doing. Uh, and and really understand the code behind subclass before you use it. Yeah. There are some really cool things that it does, like a buffer jQuery. Paul will exp explain what a buffer jQuery is. Sure. So essentially, the idea is that um, when you cause a, a browser to reflow, when a browser reflows, it's it's a cost. And um, browsers are trying to be really smart about reflows so that they can optimize them, so you can get in a bunch of like. DOM manipulations before it actually says, oh, we're going to have to re relay out the page again. Buffer jQuery is essentially the idea that we can execute a bunch of like um, attribute uh, DOM manipulation stuff that we all want to happen at the same time and we don't care about the page refreshing. We don't need an update immediately. We can just, we're just going to keep sending changes and then we're going to let it know, okay, now go ahead. And so buffer jQuery um, with sub, we can basically uh, do this um, and have that kind of control. The other use case that this, this kind of brings to life is that um, in your little my query, um, like let's say that you designed an a accordion plugin or something like that, um, you can now create an open method, a closed method, um, like kind of generic names uh, that would normally conflict with other plugins, but here we can just kind of like, because we have our own little instance, we can kind of create those uh, and put them right on that object um, without having to disturb the more global jQuery that's going on there. So it's, it's really, it's a new kind of way of in, uh, looking at the jQuery object. Um, and we're, we're very excited about feedback, community feedback. So definitely um, dig into it and, and let us know uh, kind of what you think about sub. Right. And really make sure you understand the code behind it before you use it. Because yes, yeah, so I was going to yeah. say, like the one thing that I think we all agreed on when we were talking about this is that this is subject to change, um, what this looks like and what, what, what the, eventual, uh, the eventual shape of this is. Um, so like Alex said, just make sure that you're looking at it. And we're, we're, the jQuery team is really looking for your feedback about this and about 1.5 in general. Um, so once you get it in your pages and once you start working with it, go to bugs.jquery.com and if you have, if you find problems, log them there, open a ticket. Um, and of course, if you open a ticket, make sure you have a test case with the ticket or else we will call you out by name on the next episode. Last thing on that type of thing is if you want to check out the newest jQuery at all times, there is a jQuery CDN hosted jQuery Git um, we'll post the link for it. It's code.jquery slash jquery dash git.js. And that's going to be the most recent git thing. We, we may have talked that, but you can test out your code just by subbing in that CDN hosted file. And it's going to have all this junk in it um, constantly updated, which is awesome in like JS Fiddle and things. So, so uh, what's it called? I mean, everything is subject to change. No, not, not true. Do not quote me on that. But... As soon as jQuery 1.5 wraps, we're going to start looking towards what's going to happen in 1.51, but also in 1.6. So um, if you want to get involved in that, the, uh, the avenues are open and the 
gre- wheels are greased. Yeah, great. <laughs> Good job. We also yeah. have, um, I think they're bi-weekly, right? Are they bi-weekly? No, they're, wi- no, they're weekly. They're every weekly. Week, every week. Okay, every, every week on Monday, uh, in the morning for me at least, uh, noon, noon Eastern. Yeah, well, okay. So J- <laughs> jQuery hyphen meeting on Freenode. Um, we have an hour right. long uh, meeting talking about kind of the status of jQuery core development. Um, so it's in, and we're very excited to get all the community involved, get them in there. If you have questions, ask. Um, and uh, we're basically planning out kind of the next iteration of jQuery development. So, right. But um, we encourage you to lurk for like a week or two, just see so yeah. how it goes. And you don't slow things down. Not that we hate you. It's just you're annoying the first time you're there. <laughs> you don't, don't talk the first time you're there. And then the next time, it's like, oh, this guy's been around for at least a week. And it's just we, we have a lot to get done in an hour. So I don't, I don't want to <laughs> prevent you from being wow, there. You hate I just people. want you to be. I just want you to be respectful. That's all. Uh, That's some, all. Some people, Real some of our listeners are so nice, man. to be, um, be bad. Also, so. upcoming, uh, I heard from a little bird that the Bay Area jQuery conference uh, is coming up this year, April 16th and 17th, probably in Mountain View, California. That's unofficial. 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 Says says the guy who bought plane tickets to London. Bird (laughs) from a bird. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) That was an enjoyable trip. This is considered, this is like interesting information, not Not a travel advisory. Yeah, do Um, not buy plane tickets based on this information. (laughs) Um, um, actually, so one thing that that I'm, would be a really oh, damn it, Paul. I had a great one. Oh. <laughs> damn. All right, rewind. Adam, go. All right. So, what's it called? I bet it was really ugly situation when you <laughs> you found out that your plane ticket had been bought for no reason. No. Uh, why don't you tell us about that or any other ugly situation that you may have gotten into oh. recently? Crazy that you mentioned ugly situations. Crazy. Yes. Uh, because one of the features, and I'll tie it back to something else and then move forward, is that <laughs> jQuery has uh, switched from using Google Closure, which we had recently switched from using YUI uh, Compressor, to using Google Closure Compiler, and now we're officially using Uglify JS, which doesn't have like a minify, compress, or compiler uh, thing after it. It's just like makes it smaller or ugly or whatever. Um, it's completely written in JavaScript, which is awesome. It's written uh, based on Parse.js by uh, uh, Margin I I Haverbach. Yeah. I don't know. To, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but uh, Margin check out, Haverbach. I'm gonna go with yeah, that. Check out him because he wrote uh, what was what was the book? Eloquent, uh, JavaScript. Eloquent, Eloquent JavaScript, JavaScript, the ebook, which, uh, which is I now in printed form. Yeah, it's now I a real book. I haven't read it all, but apparently all reports say awesome. Amazing. Uh, and, and the I will book be getting is just. It. Touching. Really nice to touch. Ooh, it's it's right. a gorgeous. Good. Like um, mm, right, and it. so jQuery switch over that it uses Node.js um, right now. So Windows guys who are deving on jQuery, all one of you might have a little trouble. You have to use like SigWin or however you pronounce that. But not the end of the world because uh, jQuery will live on. Uh, we, we saved quite a bit of space. I know at work I don't have the jQuery sets, but at work we we ran Uglify JS next to our YUI instance and saved nine percent. Of total code, which is is not insignificant. Wow. Um, uh, as many times as we serve our files, so check out Uglify JS. Also, I I took Uglify JS since it's written in all JavaScript, and I said, hey, maybe this would work in the browser uh, with a little bit of tweaks. And it says all over the source code, hey, this might work in the browser with a little bit of tweaks. Um, so I tried those <laughs> tweaks, and I have a, a Git repo that's uh, um, Uglify. It's like <laughs> Uglify, but it's like a UI. Oh, Except for I haven't really built out the UI at all, but it's essentially a working um, browser-side version of Uglify, so you can totally compress your JavaScript the, the best in the browser, which is awesome, which brings me to my next point. Go I'm on. just a talking fiend. Uh, I put it on the Modernizer build site. So Modernizer, um, in the next version, will support um, uh, customized versions, so you can build in the feature tests that you want. You can check out Alex Russell's recent post on the cost of feature tests um, in which he says that maybe it's not worth it. Uh, so I agree, and I think you should only run the feature tests that you need to, and you should build your feature tests from the new Modernizer. Check out the Modernizer blog if you want to. Um, and you can, wow. You can, you, can, uh, you, can, you can build your feature tests, and then those feature tests get uh, built into a single file all client-side, and they get minified with uh, Uglyf UI. 
that I they also ported to the browser, and then you get a totally client side build of Modernizer with only the feature tests that you need, which also includes Yepnope uh, JS, which is another <laughs> one of my libraries. We're we're including it as Modernizer load. <laughs> This is more information than anyone could ever handle. No way, uh, your your like rapid transitions are amazing. Just uh, I'm, how are you going to tie in Dojo One Six? You, 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 didn't, you, didn't, you didn't mention uh, Downloadify by uh, uh, jQuery uh, team member Doug Niner. Yep. Doug Niner uh, has a Flash uh, edition He's JavaScript integration that allows you to download like a string as text. And so I integrated that to where I can build your entire version of Monitor oh, and then. allow you to download it as a file, which is pretty freaking sexy. It's intense. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> Shout out. Um, easily the grainiest member of the Java of the jQuery team. Uh, <laughs> awesome work with grain, like the king of grain. Anyways, uh, you know that, what, <laughs> Alex? Yeah. After that, I think. Let's take a break for a little song. Maybe a little bit of uh, plug in of the week. Maybe. Okay, that's fine. In. I'm I'm actually very tired. I can't breathe. It's the uh, uh, It's the plug it of the week and it's really really great. It's the plug it of the week. Yeah. Uh, uh, plug it really, of the week. And it's really. <clears throat> it's really really great. The plug in um, of the week this week uh, is a plug in that hasn't even arrived yet. I am I am so psyched about this. So, David DeSandro, uh, amazing front end developer, uh, wrote jQuery Masonry a while ago. Really good. Um, you might remember jQuery Quicksand, which we figured, which we uh, presented as the plugin of the week uh, about a year ago, um, which is really hot. And Isotope, <clears throat> Isotope is David DeSandro's new plugin. It's basically Masonry plus Isotope plus everything amazing. Uh, it Mason, is Masonry a dynamic quicksand. layout generator that makes things look beautiful automatically. <clears throat> Got it. And it's great. Um, it hasn't been out. It's not. It's not out yet. But when it is, you're gonna want to to play with it and uh, dig into it because it is seriously, seriously good code. And what it actually delivers to you on the UI side is awesome. Um, so I'm really psyched about that. Also, uh, this is kind of like plugin of the week um, runner-up, I suppose. Our our good friend uh, Rob Flaherty, who goes by Ravel Rumba, we've mentioned him before, um, yeah. created a jQuery peelback ad. If you go to jQuery.com, up in the top right, you might see a salacious dancing ladies in the top right. Oh yeah. Um, we had to do that with Flash, and we don't feel good about it at all. But um, Rob created the peelback uh, plugin using just JavaScript, um, so we can get that nice like corner coming back with something beneath it kind of thing going on, and we don't have to touch Flash. And we really appreciate that, Rob. So thank you very much. We're totally gonna switch it out with uh, ours in the next year and a half, oh. at Absolutely. least. Um, yeah. Uh, Quick Paul, iterations, right? Paul, for the sake of brevity, could you talk about uh, what <laughs> Yepnope does uh, so I don't have to? Sure. Yepnope is a conditional <laughs> script loader that loads scripts conditionally. All right. Done. Moving on. That, that was it? Yep. That hurts my soul, right. but that's fine. <laughs> uh, did you guys know? Did you guys know that uh, a, a friend of the Yakery podcast, you might know him as Adam J. Sontag. Um, oh, me? Is now the head of developer relations for the jQuery. He UI. is. I, I I don't Adam. Were this you is the weirdest account. We need some confirmation here. Maybe Adam might know more about this. It's true. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> confirm. So that was that um, was a quick turnaround. That means <laughs> yeah, I'm actually a member of this podcast. Uh, it's been oh, a couple no. minutes <laughs> since I spoke because I have not released anything as baller as that shit in any. In, but, um, yeah, so if you want to complain about jQuery UI, um, which to me is literally unfathomable, um, <laughs> you can direct those things at me, or if you have ideas or enhancements or, um, uh, I don't know, suggestions yeah. right. about jQuery UI, please send them my way. Um, speaking of jQuery UI, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Um, <laughs> 
from the crash and talk about the jQuery UI tooltip, mm. which, if you were paying attention, I was about to say, does event delegation, which is really, really awesome because a tooltip is the kind of thing that is really, really transient, and a lot of the jQuery UI stuff, if you're familiar with it, uh, there's you, you tend to have a one-to-one relationship between, like, the original element and the widget. But if you want to have only one tooltip, that moves around your DOM and is used for all the tooltips in your page, the UI tooltip supports that out of the box. With uh, You can just call body tooltip and uh, set an items, that's a selector, and it's really, really slick. There's uh, the, I mentioned all this already, that the tooltip is now part of Master, just that all these other people weren't here when it happened. So you guys are behind the times of our users, which is some sort of rip in the space-time continuum. Um, yeah. Tight. Um, a few things. One, jQuery Patterns, the book by Stoyan Stefanov, is out. No, it's, it's JavaScript, not JavaScript, JavaScript Patterns. Not the new nope. jQuery. That's what I... Okay. You're wrong. My bad, my bad. JavaScript. Okay, go. <laughs> Rewind. Go. Okay, next thing. W3Fools.com came out a little bit ago, made by some people that you might know, and uh, it was good. And it actually let us talk to the, M- the Mozilla about their docs and how they could be better. And that also blended into their uh, recent documentation sprint that they had, which a lot of us participated in, which led to proxies, uh, which is in uh, ECMAScript Harmony, um, getting documented. And if you want to learn more about proxies and other things, you need to check out this amazing presentation called JavaScript, the new parts, uh, which touches on a bunch of cool shit. Also, hey, Paul, 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 let's just give a shout out to Divya Manian, who designed the W3 Fools and did a lot of work on that. I just had to throw that in Yay, there. Yay, Divya. It's baller work. Divya, Divya Pro. A plus. Also, I heard from a little bird, another one, that... Yo, this bird, you be talking to a lot of birds. There bro. might be a community-driven fork of JS Lint that what? has emerged in what? the past few months due to what some might consider unreasonable decisions made by the person in charge of the direction of JS Lint. Who will be unnamed, but Brendan Ike, if you're watching, you win. Or hanging out with us in our <laughs> chat room. So I'm just giving you a hint that there might be a fork of JS Lint. Lint. It, it's just a quick hint. Okay. Okay. That's it. About Lint. Alex. Oh. Alex. Uh, if I had to give another hint... It's that if any of you watch our podcast, you know that we always announce TXJS, as in one time we did, first on the Yay podcast. Um, and I'm willing to do that today. I'm willing to say that <laughs> right TXJS here. will be in Austin, Texas on June 11th at the Alamo Draft House Ritz downtown. Beautiful. Um, and if you're a Yay member, you should buy plane tickets or car tickets. Those don't exist, but you should buy them anyways. Uh, hotels, whatever you need to get here for TXJS then. Tickets will go on sale sometime within the next month. We don't have the day exactly planned down. We just wanted to wait for uh, JSConf and NodeConf to be out of the way. Those sound awesome. Go to those two. Uh, turns out they're sold out. Sorry. But TXJS, <laughs> watch it. Oh. Uh, be there. Watch out for it. We also um, recently just saw the release of a video by a guy named Paul Irish called Who's that? 11 More Things I Learned from the jQuery Source. Sounds Stupid. Like a douche. Don't watch it. Don't watch <laughs> don't, it. Terrible don't. information. Totally. Hey, can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with yeah. you? I saw this thing, 11 More Things, at the bottom of our show notes here, yeah. and I thought we had 11 more things to talk about. <laughs> um, but so we didn't I write down what they were, relieved. just 11 more things. Understandable. I just want to quickly call out, like, if you watch 10 things I learned about the jQuery source, <laughs> Paul goes through, like, the jQuery source and finds things that he found in there. Maybe not, like, instantly that he just recently found. But 11 more things, I, I watched maybe like half of it before I got tired of the way he talked. Um, <laughs> uh, and like none of the things are actually in jQuery except for like m- some of them. Right? Like, not 11 things, things maybe? It was not 11 it, things no, and most of them were in video. the jQuery it was stores. trash. So it's just like take it for what it is. Yeah. Like there's some Seriously. cool stuff in there but like don't take the guy serious. He's somewhat crazy. Like I said, this Paul Irish guy sounds like a douche. Mm, agreed. Seriously. You can yeah. check him out at Paul Irish Jr. on Twitter, right? That's the <laughs> <laughs> Paul Irish Jr., uh, yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you for All watching right. another episode of Yay Query, uh, brought to you by our sponsors, Tidy CDN and Wotato. We appreciate... Uh, Wotato! Wotato. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Right. Peace. Every time I hear him talk, it gets sexier. Like, gonna have to change clothes after this.